Yeah, I mean, for me, and as you know, uh, I just finished, and this year just came out with the film called Shirley, which is about Shirley Chisholm that stars the absolutely remarkable Regina King. And if you don't watch the movie for any other reason, certainly watch it for the history, but Regina is phenomenal. Shirley came on the scene in 1968, first black woman elected as a congressperson. She was a Democrat, 1972, which... Joe, this is where I would frame this election for any number of reasons. 1972, Shirley Chisholm runs for president of the United States, only been a congressman going into her, her second term. People thought she was crazy. But at the same time, 1972, first year that 18-year-olds could vote. So it was very much about young people, the way it is now, that young people feel like they don't have a voice, they don't have a chance, they can't get into the game. Mm -hmm. uh, 1972, the election turned on an assassination attempt. George Wallace, running as a Democrat, if you can believe that, uh, was actually winning most of the early primaries. Uh, in April, I believe it was in Maryland, was, was shot. Really changed the trajectory, allowed George Wallace to get into the race. But Shirley Chisholm actually went into the Democratic convention controlling almost 200 delegates. He needed 1,500 to be president. She wasn't gonna get the nomination, but she really had the power to affect change at the convention. But it was the Democrats, particularly the men, and crazily enough, the Congressional Black Caucus, which she helped kick off, actually turned against her and blew up that coalition. So 52 years later, Joe, for me, when that drumbeat and the voices were getting more clear that Joe Biden, for, for the sake of the country, should probably step aside, my concern was that there would be some equivocation. And you heard individuals like Deval Patrick saying, hey, we got a deep bench. That's great, you got a deep bench, but you also got a player who's ready to get in the game. That's Vice President Harris. So for someone who just you know, spent four years looking at a, a similar run, a similar moment in history, uh, as the individual you were talking about, 1968, again, I'd put it at 72, but 52 years ago, the Democrats now have a chance to do things differently, and they did. And you can feel the energy, you can see the conversations, and frankly, you can hear the fear, in my opinion, on the other side, because they don't know how to game this individual, not her record, not what she's done, not what she's accomplished, and not who she is. And can I say one other thing real quick, and then I want to turn it over. And this, to me, is the most incredible thing. And if there's nothing else that you take away from what I'm saying, please take this. We are being told this year, in this cycle, DEI is the boogie person, right? That is what is going to destroy America, having to sit down and learn how to conduct ourselves with other individuals. It has been reported that just two days ago, Congress, the, the Republican Congressional Caucus, had to sit down and have a DEI meeting and actually explain to their members how you interact, how you speak without being racist, sexist, misogynistic. So if DEI is so awful, why do the Republicans, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a little salty language, it's only 6 o'clock out here, why do grown-ass individuals have to be sat down and taught how to talk to other people like human beings? Of course, Donald says that he doesn't want to be nice anymore, so maybe it doesn't matter. Anyway, to yeah. me, it's 1972, it's Shirley Chisholm.